Welcome back to your daily dose of guitars, the Troglies Guitar Show. Today we're going to take a look at the brand new for 2019 Original Collection 50 Standard P90 Gold Top. This is one of the new models that I've been really looking forward to learning about and getting to try hands on. It's beautiful, it's historic looking, so let's go ahead and dive in with a little bit of its history. At the Winter NAMM Show 2019, Gibson, under a new CEO, introduced the new Original Collection. Now, many people have been quick to point out that a lot of this is just a marketing thing. They just rebranded traditionals into standards. Yeah, they changed a few things, modified the prices a little bit. But for the most part, they just simplified the lineup so it is easy to understand. They made one called the Original Collection, which is what we'll be talking about today, and one called the Modern Collection. You can check out some of these other reviews to learn more about that. So within this original collection, there's two different Les Paul standards. You've got the 50s and the 60s. What's the main differences between those? Neck sizes. You've got big chunky necks on your 50s. You've got slimmer necks on your 60s. The 50s will have a Klusen style tuner, whereas the 60s have Grovers, and they have slightly different magnets in their pickups. And each of the 50s and 60s standards were offered in three different hues. But what makes the 50 standards unique is there is this submodel. It is called the 50 standard P90. And it is only available in gold at this point in time. And what is this instrument? Well, it's based off of a 1956 gold top. Diving into the history of that model, that is the last configuration of a Les Paul before they switched over to humbuckers. The evolution of that model from 52 and 53, you've got what they called the trapeze tailpiece. Then they switched it over into a wrap tail in 54. And then in 56, they threw on the ABR1 bridge, which is kind of a huge deal in Gibson history. But this 50 standard P90 features no weight relief, nickel hardware, an ABR1 bridge with hand wired pots, a traditional maple top with a mahogany back and mahogany neck and rosewood fretboard. So it's a pretty basic instrument, nothing too crazy going on here, but it's just mainly that this is now available at all times from Gibson. Let's go ahead and get my first impressions of this one. I've reviewed quite a few of these new 2019s from the original and modern collection. And I've got to say this one has impressed me the most right out of the box. The very first thing I noticed is this fretboard. I have not conditioned this yet, and I'm not even going to. This is such a beautiful dark rosewood fretboard, and we've been having some serious issues with really dried out looking stuff. It's kind of become a topic on many a forums of people fighting over whether you should condition your boards or not, or why they look as dried out as they are. This is a beautiful piece of rosewood. The next thing I notice about this one is it is really heavy. We're talking like 10 and a half pounds heavy, but you know, that kind of comes from not having weight relief anymore. But don't worry, not all of them are this heavy. I mean, take a look at these on Sweetwater. You can see the weights vary anywhere from like eight and a half pounds if you're super lucky to about 10 and a half if you like a chunkier guitar. So once I saw that beautiful board, picked it up, felt the weight, the next thing I noticed was this neck. Now, I have not owned a 50 standard with the humbuckers yet, but I did play one at Sweetwater when I chose to take home the 60 standard. That neck felt huge to me. It was like an R7 gold top. This one, it's chunky, but it is not what I would consider like a true baseball bat neck. So I'm not sure if they're all like this, so I will get you the measurements here on the bench, but I will say this is more like a really chunky medium profile as compared to what most people visualize when they think 50s neck. Furthermore, I thought the color was pretty good on this. I mean, it's not like the historic gold color, but it definitely has that dark look at certain angles, and then it gets light at others. And I'm kind of digging this light back here. I think a dark back option would also be cool to offer in the future. But what really sells me on this one is the mahogany dances around a little bit. I always love it when I can get an example that does that. So it was looking good from there, but the biggest thing with this one, 
I mean, I'm honest when I review these guitars. If there's quality control issues or small defects, I point them out, not because I want to shame Gibson on every little thing, but that's just how I conduct every review. I'm a used guitar salesman. I'm used to pointing out all these little things, but I could only find very minimal issues with this instrument. I mean, when you think brand new guitar, that's pretty much what I received on this one. We just have a little bit of tooling marks on the binding that we'll go over. There's a few little bubbles to the lacquer over here. But other than that, this thing is near spotless. So fantastic job on that one. And overall, this thing just feels good. I'll be honest, I haven't plugged it in yet at this point. It's all just acoustically strumming it, taking a look at it, getting my first impressions. I am really happy with this guitar. So let's go ahead, throw it on the workbench, take a look at all of its individual parts, and then we'll get to that playing demo. Let's go ahead and take a look at these pickups first. Gibson is marking these as the Rhythm P90 Soap Bar and the Lead P90 Soap Bar. Now it's kind of interesting here. Keep in mind, I'm recording this 52519. It was less than three weeks ago when these things were made. May 2nd and May 7th. That's just crazy how fast things can go. This was in Nashville. It was then shipped to Indiana. Now it's in Ohio. And who knows where it's gonna go next. But these are utilizing a spring. Not all P90s will have that. Some will have like a foam block in here to set the height, but it is nice to know that these come with this. But according to Gibson spec sheets, these are using the Alnico 5 magnets. And within the circuit, the bridge pickup is reading about 8.8K ohms and the neck pickup a little less hot at 7.85. Now looking at the pickup routes itself, it looks like they did a very nice clean job in routing this. Fortunately, no long neck tenon to make a smiley face this time, but you do have these two holes right here. And that's because of this, a base plate. So essentially what happens is these two little screws right here with the springs, they go in right here. And what's nice about these, just in case you don't have experience with P90 pickups, Say you want to try a mini humbucker out, they will fit in the exact same route. In fact, that's what these two little holes are for, the outside height adjustment springs of a mini humbucker. So that's good to keep in mind just in case you want to swap out your pickups. Here's what your bridge pickup cavity looks like and you might be like, huh, there's no markings in here? There is, it's just very faint. I almost couldn't see any at all until I got to this angle. I still can't quite read what it says though. The bridge position also utilizes the same base plate. We've got all nickel hardware on these. It is a Gibson ABR-1 bridge, but they are stud mounted. So that's not a historically accurate way to mount the ABR-1 bridge, but that's the way they're doing it at Gibson USA now. The tailpiece is also lightweight aluminum by Advanced Plating. Continuing on, you get an amber switch tip with a poker chip on this model. Something I just want to point out for full disclosure in case somebody wants to purchase this one. During shipping, this plastic switch tip did get damaged. You can see it kind of has an indentation right there. That's because it was on here like so, and it must have got jostled around a bit in shipping and it caused that impression to happen. Not a big deal, but I want you to be aware of that. Then over here, we have our gold bonnet knobs with the thumb bleeder pointers, but they are rounded off so you won't actually cut yourself. Now underneath the pick guard, do we have that big old dent? I do not see one on this one. Let's get it in the light just to be sure though. Very tiny, it is there, but it's not too much of an eyesore. So if you're a pick guard off person, I think you'll be okay. But I do want to illustrate something with the pick guard back on. This is kind of a quality control issue that I believe needs addressed because I've noticed this on pretty much every single brand new 2019 model I've had. See, the pick guard is actually being bent, which causes these two ends to sit lower and that's causing that indentation. Take a look at it from this angle and you can see what I'm talking about. It's drooping down here and it shouldn't be. Part of this, I believe this needs to be moved a little bit up. And also this screw was drilled a little bit crooked. It's not actually sitting flat. I think that's another issue. Here's what I'm talking about. When you press that down, you see how that hole doesn't actually line up where it's supposed to be? The screw has to be sunk in slightly crooked in order to get it there. And that's what's causing all this binding. 
Moving on to the fretboard, we've been having lots of issues with like binding, chewing marks, and like indentations into the fretboard. I mean, I'm going to take another light here just so you guys can see this. This is an example that I would say is as close to perfect as you're going to find. I mean, sure, you still have a little bit of it on the fretboard and whatnot, but it's nothing too incredibly major. On top of that, you kind of have a small leveling line that just goes up and down the binding, but this is as close to perfection as I think we will ever find on a Gibson at this point in time. So I'm actually really happy with this example. On top of that, the fretboard is just gorgeous on this one. Doesn't need any type of conditioning, and you've got acrylic inlays on these models. Here's what your headstock looks like. Your truss rod cover reads standard, and here's what the cavity itself looks like. Everything's looking good in there. Got Les Paul model silkscreen with the Gibson Mother of Pearl logo. At the nut, I'm measuring 1.68 inches, which increases to 2.06 at the 12th. First fret neck depth, 0.89, and I'm getting an even inch at the 12th. Moving on to the back side of the instrument here, you can see the hand-wired audio taper pots with orange drop capacitors. We'll get a nice close-up on those codes for you guys that care about that. But the pots are Gibson branded, they're on that whole shielding plate system, so that's something that would also be different if you got a true R6, you wouldn't have that shielding plate. But a 50s correct feature that they have here is a plastic jack plate. Even though they're prone to cracking and metal would be superior, it's just kind of a historically correct thing. Also following along the lines of being historically correct, you can see the maple cap slightly exposed right here in the cutaway. That's called thin binding in the cutaway. It's a premium feature, though many people mistake that as a defect. But the back on this one's beautiful. This is a two-piece mahogany back, and inside here is the toggle switch cavity route. So not too much going on there. And we'll just follow the neck up here. I mean, it's a very nice rounded profile. It doesn't feel quite as large as those numbers made it seem to me. But maybe it's just because I'm not necessarily comparing it to like a super thin neck or anything. So made in USA stamp. And this is our serial number, which reads 2019, 114th day of the year. First batch, 107th in production with Gibson Cluson Deluxe Tuners. I told you this one was chunky. 10 pounds, 5.6 ounces. Let's run through the tones now. There's no fancy electronics, it's just neck, middle, and bridge. So starting with the neck pickup. smooth sound to it. It's really nice and jazzy and beefy. Personally, I find myself always being on the neck pickup for this instrument. Middle position. a nice in-between sound there, kind of funky. Now the bridge pickup. Personally, I always find the bridge P90 on Gibson pickups to be just a little bit too thin. It doesn't quite have enough punch in this example. Sometimes you can raise the pickup a little bit to help with that, but I don't really want to put it much higher. So personally, I would prefer something a little bit hotter. But that's it for me talking. Let's go ahead and go straight to the tone demos. <laughs> Thank you. 
answer a few questions that I've been seeing in the comments of some of my other 2019 videos, as well as the unboxing video for this one. The first question is somebody wanted me to compare this to the new Les Paul special. Is it a thousand dollars better than that? Because the special, those are running $15.99. This guy's a $24.99, so it's about a $900 price difference. What do you get for that? You get a carved maple top, you get binding along the top and the fretboard, you get trapezoid inlays instead of dots, you get an ABR1 bridge and tailpiece setup instead of just a wraparound piece, you get the mother of pearl Gibson logo, and it's gonna be heavier than that. So is it really fair to compare those two models? No, I mean, they're completely different. But if you're comparing them sonically, I think it just comes down to if you want the maple top or not. The next big one is how does this differ from last year's 2018 classic that you could basically get looking just like this? That's a really fantastic question and one Gibson probably doesn't want you asking, but they are very similar. They're both non-weight relieved. They have the hand wired pots with orange drop caps, but here's what's different. You get a Tectoid nut instead of the new Graftec nut. You have the large strap buttons instead of the vintage correct looking ones, Grover tuners instead of the Klusen style. The classics appear to have a slightly larger looking headstock as well, but the biggest difference to note is those will have a slim taper neck profile, whereas these guys are more chunky. Another few small differences, you've got different knobs. You've got the speed knobs with no thumb bleeders on the classic, and they have the textured back plates with the shielding built into them. So if you can't afford one of these new standards and you really don't care about neck profile, that is definitely a good option to go for. But another big one is how does this differ from like a traditional 1956 reissue? Well, right now these are running $24.99 brand new. A 56 reissue almost costs double that, believe it or not, $46.99. And pretty much the only difference is you'll get a real ABR1 bridge on that one, you'll get the long neck tenon, the shape of the headstock, the top carve of the instrument, those will be slightly different. You'll get 50s wiring in that model. The historics are usually lighter in weight, they use choice mahoganies for them. So it really does come down to just some very small nitpicky details. But once you start comparing to like an older used R6, you know, that might be a serious discussion that you might have to have with yourself. Because comparing a used one of these and a used R6, you're going to be at about five to $600 difference. So you have to decide if that's worth it to you because they're going to sound fairly similar anyways. Now that we know all about this instrument and how it sounds, what are my final thoughts on the 50 standard P90? I can recommend this without any reservations. There truly is something special about these new 50s and 60s standards. It kind of seems weird that I would get excited over a new guitar, but these really are awe-inspiring in just the way they look, sound, and feel. This example is probably the happiest I've been with my new 2019 instruments because very little quality control issues, and it's just great, so definitely check it out. But my final thoughts that I want to share with this is I thought the bridge pickup, it sounded a little bit thin when it was clean. Once you got the distortion though, the middle and neck almost seemed a little bit too muddy. So it was kind of nice that it was thinner. The tuning stability of the instrument, it was good. I mean, I had to keep tweaking it just like a few cents here and there, but that's just strings settling in. So that's nothing to do with really the design. And my final thought that I want to leave you with here, if you're trying to decide between the P90s and the humbuckers, First, if you can, try them out, but something else to keep in mind is P90s do hum. Unless you get a noiseless P90 or you install a dummy coil like some of the Blues Hawks have or something like that. And if you gig a lot, sometimes that hum can be amplified by fluorescent lighting, things like that. Something to keep in mind. I mean, if you're a guy playing at home, that doesn't matter, but if you're looking for a gigging machine, you can weigh your options to see if that matters to you because you can get a 50 standard in a gold top finish with humbuckers. If you decide to purchase one of these, you get all of this. So your case candy includes a baggie to hold all this in. You get a, an inspected by checklist, the baby photo, the warranty card, a blank truss rod cover in case you don't want it to say standard. I think that's the best feature here. You get a black polishing cloth, the Gibson multi-tool, a Gibson branded strap, and the owner's manual. And here's what the case looks like. It's got a nice red interior, good heel support, double neck rest, compartment for all your case candy. 
and there's the top lid and the exterior is just brown and says Gibson on it. If you think you might be interested in being the next owner of this 50 standard with P90s, now that my review is done, you can check out that link in the description that will take you to the Reverb for Sale page. All right, thank you Troglodytes for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Share the video with a friend who would enjoy it, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.